do you want to know why so many people love and support Kennedy? It's because he tells the truth. It's because he's honest. He just sat down with Piers Morgan to talk about this historic debate on Tuesday between President Trump and Vice President Harris. And it would have been so easy for him to say, to just praise Trump and say, you know what, what we saw on Tuesday is what we're going to continue to see over the next four years, which was a man fighting for the future of this country. He could have said that, but instead he decided to be a lot more transparent. He decided to tell you the truth. He, he tells you where Trump missed and how Kamala Harris truly did, especially in the eyes of so many voters and undecided voters. So you are you are you are in for a ride. Check this out, Mr. Kennedy, ladies and gentlemen. What did you honestly think about last night's debate? I'll tell you what I honestly thought. I thought Trump lost and Kamala Harris won. Yeah, I think that uh, Vice President Harris was better prepared and that she was much more polished. Um, I think that the she also had the hosts on her side, which I think allowed her to get away with some of the statements on the substantive issues. And for me, Pierce, on the substantive issues, I think Trump does better. His delivery is bad. And I think um, mm. some a lot of the things that Frank Luntz just said uh, are accurate. Um, See? Kennedy keeps it real. He says, yeah, Trump's delivery was bad, but he also acknowledges the fact that Trump does have something that Kamala, that he believes Kamala Harris doesn't, which is substance. And a lot of voters are agreeing with that. So many people are still unsatisfied with Kamala Harris. They're saying she didn't talk about her policies enough. I still don't know what she's going to do for us in the future. I still don't know why she hasn't done anything right now. These are all valid concerns and criticisms that people are, that are people are discussing right now. Wow. Um, but, you know, the first question, I'll give you an example. The first question, was, which I think was the most important question of the night, was, are you better off today than you were four years she ago? She didn't answer. She never answered that. Yeah. She never answered it. And and the, the hosts were, were calling Trump on, you know, and, and debunking and fact-checking him on all of his uh, questions. But they did not. They did not discipline her on that. And why, that, so let I don't me ask you that. that any let addition. me ask you that, Robert. So why oh, yeah. didn't Trump then jump in and say, you haven't answered the question, Kamala. Are we better off now than we were before I left office? And See, I really don't agree with Piers right here. Because now, on top of debating Kamala, he wants Trump to do the job that the moderators were hired to do. Like, I'm sorry. that. That doesn't sound right. Like anyone with a brain cell would know that the moderators clearly had bias. They were clearly in favor of Kamala. Now, I will say that Kamala was definitely more prepared and polished. The, my question is, do you want someone who's polished? Do you want someone who gives you scripted answers? Or do you want someone who, like Kennedy, and I believe like Trump, gives you the honest, unfiltered truth, even, even as ref unrefined as it might be? At least it's honest. Whenever you go through a filter that is, you know, Kamala Harris's voice, I don't know. I think a lot of people are starting to feel concerned of what she is saying, if it's actually true or if she's just blatantly lying. A lot of people are saying that they were feeling, they had this feeling that what, whenever Kamala Harris was speaking, they were just hearing lies. They were hearing nonsense. They didn't believe her because all of this are words and a lack of action because she's been in. She's been in the office the past three and a half years, and now she's pretty much saying, hey, if you want me to fix all the problems that my administration caused, hire me. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? Yeah, sad. And it, it was his failure to jump in and get the answers he wanted or the questions he wanted. I just felt that was weird. He just didn't seem to want to do that. And I'm not quite sure whether he was told not to or was told to behave himself, whatever it may be. He was very un-Trump-like last night. Yeah, you know, he actually, historically, he's been one of the greatest debaters yes. in American history. I mean, he dispatched brutal 16 opponents in, in a row in 2016. But last night, he was not showing that side. And I think he lost a huge opportunity really showcase his policies like frank said he was the better president i mean we're you know we have it we have doubled the inflation the housing prices have doubled 
There are 15 million wow. more Americans in poverty. The suicide rates have, have gone through the roof. The drug overdoses, all the indicia of, of social deterioration have increased dramatically after, and then the immigrant problem, which I think wow. he talked about constantly, but I think one well-articulated uh, response on that would have been much more effective than, than uh, you know, the way that it was done. And wow. then on the that's that's so good. I love how he talked about Trump brought up immigration a lot, but now you kind of see this argument of quality versus quantity, right? He had the quantity, but it wasn't articulate enough, right? It wasn't it it didn't resonate with the amount of people that it needed to to actually cause him to actually move the needle in his direction. So the question now that a lot of people are having is, When's the next debate? This past debate was so good, right? Well, it looks like we're probably not going to see it. Unfortunately, President Trump made this statement today. He shared this just just like an hour ago. But look at this. President Trump said, when a prize fighter loses a fight, the first words out of his mouth are, I want a rematch, right? Polls clearly show that I won the debate against Kamala Harris the Democrats uh, left candidate on Tuesday night, and she immediately called for a second debate. She and <laughs> Joe have destroyed our country with the millions of criminals and mentally deranged people pouring into the USA, totally unchecked and unvetted, and with inflation bankrupting our middle class. Everyone knows this and all the other problems caused by Kamala and Joe. It was discussed in great detail during the first debate with Joe and the second debate with Kamala Harris. She was a no-show at the Fox debate and refused to do NBC and CBS. Kamala should focus on what she should have done during the last almost four-year period. There will be no third debate. Wow. All caps, too. At least this, at least the last uh, last two sentences, there will be no debate, third debate. Now, for for me, I'm really sad about this. I think I think good things happen after debates. I I really do. I think whenever you're able to stand up there and fight in this battleground of ideas, I think you allow the American people to to make a more informed decision. Now, unfortunately, because of ABC, that fight was a was a three on one and it was so sad to see so if i were trump i don't know if i would have i don't know if i would have wanted to do another debate because who knows if the next debate would look like this right and now there's a bunch of conspiracy theories saying that look like look at this look at what i just saw here by uh, philip anderson they say that a whistleblower confirms that kamala harris was given the questions before the abc debate whoa is that true is that true there's actually Another post that I wanted to share. Look at this. This is this is crazy. This person saying, I will be releasing an affidavit from an ABC whistleblower regarding the debate. I have just signed a non-disclosure agreement with the attorney of the whistleblower. The affidavit states how the Harris campaign was given sample questions, with, which were essentially the same questions that were given during the debate and separate assurances of fact-checking Donald Trump and that she would not be fact-checked. So again, take this with a grain of salt. We don't know if this is real or not. We won't know until probably a couple hours. But look at this. They also said that they'll be releasing this before the weekend is out. So, but it looks like it was designed into the debate to give Kamala a significant advantage. So it looks, it, we could really tell that President Trump was up against an entire machine, which was the Democratic Party. And it's it's really uncomfortable to be witnessing this unfold. But the question is now, I mean, are we going to see this translate into polls? Do Are people smart enough to or aware enough to actually digest all this information, digest the debate, and still vote for, let's say, President Trump? Would they do it? Or are people really starting to, to reconsider their options? I saw this video by... It was shared by Dom Luker, and this said, footage has released 
showing President Biden and Kamala Harris at being met with silence when they enter a room full of firefighters. Donald Trump walked in behind him and was met with a standing ovation. I really did not believe that was true, but the video really says otherwise. This was taken yesterday on 9-11. Check this out. I mean, if I walked in and I saw President Biden and, and Vice President Harris, I would freak out. Are you kidding me? I don't I, I, I don't care. Like I'll freak out for any, you know, living president. I really would. I would love the privilege of getting to meet one. That would be incredible. But I would absolutely freak out, jump out of my seat and just be like, this is incredible. Oh my goodness. And look at what happens here. People are looking at them and they're like not caring at all. He's literally right there with his hands. What what is wrong with people? And they're looking at him. They see him. Do you see this woman right here? She was not phased at all. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Again. This is this is not this is not pre debate. This is post debate. They saw what happened. If they aren't, if they were happy with Kamala Harris's performance, and if they were unhappy with President with uh, President Trump's performance, then they would have. You would have seen this. You would have seen this trans translated into this moment. But look at this woman, completely unfazed. Nothing. And President Trump. Wow. That's crazy. People are standing up. People are taking out their phones. You hear people clapping. That is wild. For for the for people going into the same room to get completely different reactions. Like like not not even not even me, not even someone who's been fairly unhappy with the Biden Harris administration, not even what I give that kind of cold cold welcoming to them like that is that is crazy that just tells you how how deep people are feeling about this and mind you yesterday president biden put on a trump hat which was really hilarious you know he only had it on for a second all right he put it on he laughed about it took it off i really don't think it's that serious you have some people on the right saying oh my gosh he's gonna be voting for trump he's absolutely converting he hates kamala harris just like president trump said i don't know i don't think it's that serious i think it's just a funny moment i think president biden just has you know this senioritis last semester of high school kind of attitude like he, he's he's good he's happy he's he's been relaxing at the beach he's been kicking his kicking off his socks and just relaxing. I, I think he's I think he's fine. I think he's fine. And you know what? Another one that I another thing I wanted to share. This is probably gonna be the last thing I share. But look at this picture. This this uh, picture was posted. It has over 1.4 million views. But Craig says they say a picture is worth a thousand words. And this one speaks volumes. Now if you're not sure what happened after the debate, this is a picture by AP it looks like but after the debate President Trump went outside and actually took questions from reporters, from the press, from journalists, and from anyone else who wanted to talk to him. He is open, okay? Now, what did Kamala Harris do? She left. She didn't take any questions from the press or journalists or reporters, and she just went to another, um, I believe she went to another campaign rally, or no, she went to a campaign watch party with a bunch of her supporters. You could say that's good too, but... To me, that also seems like a missed opportunity. If you actually think you won the debate, why wouldn't you actually go outside, just just outside those doors and say, all right, guys, I did it. You guys wanted me to talk to you. I wanted to prepare for the debate. And now we could talk about other pressing issues. Okay, let's talk. How did I do? I thought I crushed it. You could have had that conversation, but you missed it. Okay, but you know, didn't miss it? President Trump. And I actually wrote these words on my on X earlier today, if you want to follow me on there, but I wrote, what worries me, if Vice President Kamala Harris is elected, we will rarely get firsthand insights on developing stories, transparent reporting that reflects this country and what we're actually doing about it. 
Yes, Trump is messy, but at least he owns his mess instead of playing hide and seek. I've been very clear here. I do think I do think Vice President Harris should be doing more interviews. I think she should be talking to the press. I don't think she should be sending out a thousand tweets every day, just doing a bunch of talking um, on online instead of actually meeting with meeting with the press. I I don't know. I don't think she should be dodging these things right now. I feel like she's literally playing hide and seek. Do you think that's right? Is that the person that you want running this country? If your answer is yes, then by all means vote for her. I I welcome anyone here. I really do. But this uh. I got to tell you, this makes me a bit uncomfortable, to say the least. But what do you think about that? You you let me know in the comments. Another thing I want I'd ask you to to comment on is they spent a lot of time talking about the question and how Kamala Harris dodged it, which was, "Are you better off than you were four years ago?" I don't know. I think it's a fair question. A lot of people are feeling that they're not. A lot of people are feeling that they've been taken advantage of. A lot of people are feeling like their dollar doesn't stretch as far as it used to. But what I want to know is, is that how you're feeling? The people who watch this channel, the people who consume content from me on a regular basis, I want to know where you are. So let me know how you're feeling about all this, how you're dealing with all the craziness of this election. And I will see you all next time. Hope you have a good day. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching and listening. I appreciate your time so much and I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you'd like to support what we're building here, please like and subscribe. It means a lot and it really helps us out. And if you want to see even more content from me, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I'm going to be sharing a lot more on there. Thank you so much. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.